Um, hi, we're going to be talking to you about the autonomic supply to the oral cavity. So, um, just generally, the structures that are innervated in the oral cavity by autonomic nerves are your salivary glands, so your parotid, your submandibular, and your sublingual glands. Um, just briefly, can anyone tell me which gland has gives the most volume of secretion? Anyone? Yeah? The Yes. Um, and you've also, also got, the mucous membranes also receive autonomic stimulation, so you've got your palate, tongue, and the oropharynx. And we're not going to be concentrating on the oropharynx today, but it's worth noting that um, preganglionic fibres, um, parasympathetic fibres, are associated with the glossopharyngeal nerves, via the pharyngeal plexus. So, um, parasympathetic uh, stimulation to the salivary glands are secretomotors, so they produce watery secretions. Well, sympathetic stimulation is secretor motor and vasomotor. So your saliva becomes sticky and mucus rich, and you also get reduced blood supply to the salivary glands. Um, this has been gone over a lot today, but I'll just briefly say it again. Um, so your parasympathetic preganglionic fibers arise from brainstem nuclei, um, and they hitchhike along other nerves. Um, the ones of the oral cavity that are significant are cranial nerves 7 and 9. Um, they then synapse at ganglia which are located in the face, face tissue and these ganglia all lie in relation to the trigeminal nerve. Um, so your preganglionic and postganglionic autonomic parasympathetic fibres are in green and the ones that hitchhike along are the other colours. And they hitchhike, the postganglionic fibres then hitchhike again to the gland or target tissue that they innovate. Sympathetic supply to the oral cavity um, starts at T1 to L2, and the preganglionic sympathetic fibres ascend to the superior cervical ganglion in the paravertebral chain. So there's the superior cervical ganglion there. Um, the, and it's located in the root of the neck. The postganglionic fibres pass into the base of the skull from there, and they hitchhike along the internal and external carotid artery and branches of those arteries, um, and they run outside the carotid sheath. They then run to the target tissue, so your salivary glands and your mucous membranes to the mouth. Um, so if we look at parasympathetic supply to your submandibular and sublingual glands, which are over here, and here's the tongue you can see over here, um, this parasympathetic supply um, starts from your superior salivatory nucleus in the pons, and it hitchhikes along the corda tympani, which is a branch of the facial nerve. The facial, that, that branch, the corda tympani, then joins onto the lingual nerve, which is a branch of the mandibular division of your trigeminal nerves, and they synapse at the submandibular ganglion. Postganglionic fibres go from there to your submandibular and sublingual nerves. While we're here, for the, the tongue also receives autonomic stimulation, and the serous glands are innervated by an in, the internal laryngeal nerve, which is a branch of the vagus. Sympathetic supply to the submandibular glands. Um, we've already looked at parasympathetic. That's what this part of the diagram is showing. So we look at the sympathetic, which is over here. It arises from T1 and enters the sympathetic paravertebral trunk. It goes to the superior cervical ganglion, and is the preganglionic fibres. And um, then the postganglionic fibres from there enter the external carotid artery plexus, and then the facial artery plexus, which is a branch of the external carotid. And the fibres then travel to your submandibular and salivary glands. Oh. Oops. Okay, so for the mucous glands of the palate, um, we have these pre-ganglionic fibres here, and they originate from your superior salivary nucleus. And like Jenny said, they then hitchhike, but um, this time it's your greater petrosal nerve, after facial. They then sign up at your telgoparatine um, ganglion. And then your post ganglionic fibers are secreting motor, and they then innovate your palate, so you can um, kind of innovate those glands. And for parotid, it has a different innovation to your sublingual and submaxillary. So this time it's your inferior salivary nucleus here. And so here you can see the pre ganglionic fibers, and this time they hitch up with your glossopharyngeal, and it's the lesser petrosal branch. So after they reach your otic ganglion and they synapse, you have post um, ganglionic fibers here. And they hitch out with the auricular temporal nerve, and it's a branch of your mandibular division of the trigeminal, and then they can then innervate your parotid gland. So that was parasympathetic, and this time for sympathetic, um, again you have pre ganglionic fibers, and they rise from T1, and they go out to your um, sympathetic parietal chain, and they synapse in your superior cervical ganglion, 
and then you have your parasympathetic fibers and they then hitchhike using your external carotid artery so they go into your external um, carotid artery plexus to innervate your carotid glands okay so one clinical aspect we found was Frey syndrome so it's a similar concept to um, carotid arteries that Greg and Harry discussed where you have damage to fibers and when they try and regenerate they don't do so correctly but in Frey syndrome you have damage to the auriculotemporal so that, that's the more that um, your post-ganglionic fibers um, hitchhike upon. So in this case, when you have um, a salivatory um, stimuli, instead of causing increased secretions from the parotid, you get things like pain, but it's exaggerated pain, and things like sweating as well. Uh, yes. Yeah.